are here today to uh, learn how to use uh, Zwiton 3D uh, to create a model that works fine with the Floor 3D card. So uh, Zwiton 3D is the tool that I'm using in order to create the models to support my, my card. Uh, I think it is the best solution uh, that is free. Uh, and that provides all the features that are needed uh, in order to uh, obtain a good result inside the Home Assistant card. Of course there are other uh, systems and tools in the market that can achieve similar things and even better, but usually either they are paying or uh, let's say they may require uh, some uh, specific training uh, in order to achieve good, uh, good results. Let's say. So Zwitone 3D, you see here the site where you can uh, download the software um, and as you will see later, let's say it is uh, um, the version 6.6 .6 right now and uh, usually um, the version is important especially if you want to use uh, the plugin that I have created for Zwitone 3D um, and I will recommend uh, each time I will release a new uh, plugin for the for the system for Zwitone 3D. I will recommend the version uh, to use in order to uh, be sure that the plugin will work fine. And uh, we will see later why uh, the plugin could be important. Okay, so let's go to uh, Zwitone 3D. Zwitone 3D is a quite simple software, so uh, it is not a tutorial for Zwitone 3D. There are plenty of materials on the web, you will find uh, documentation, you will find videos on how to use it proficiently. But I will concentrate on all those aspects of Zwitone 3D that are important for building models that works good for the floor 3D card. You can see that the window is uh, shared into four spaces. One space is about the catalog of objects that you can use in order to create your model. Um, there is a bottom space where you have, let's say, the list of uh, uh, objects that you have created inside the model. And then you have, uh, let's say, the biggest space is the one where you are really actually building the model um, that is a 2D space. So you will build always your model based on 2D. And then, let's say, in the bottom um, uh, space, you have the 3D rendering of the 2D model that you have created. So uh, it's not uh, a tool like Blender where you actually build your model usually directly in 3D or um, with a complex usage of the UI. Uh, it is uh, a tool that allows you to get very, very fast to the uh, creation of a floor plan. And so this is uh, why, let's say, it is uh, so attractive uh, for those of you that have not uh, very, very big skills in terms of uh, 3D modeling. So now I will uh, open the model, uh, a model that I have uh, um, retrieved from the Zwitone 3D site and that is used to uh, as an example. Okay. So you can see here in the 2D space uh, that you, you have already all the walls created, uh, all the doors uh, and um, all the uh, furniture, the tiles in the floors, the walls, etc, etc. What it is important uh, here, let's say, to note, uh, and here I will go only on a list of things that are important for uh, working well in Floor 3D card. First of all, let's say, all um, the object uh, uh, that you create in the 2D model should be placed uh, at the right of the uh, zero meter coordinates uh, and at below the zero meter coordinates that you see here, let's say. So uh, try as much as possible to stick to this guideline um, 
in order for the uh, model to be loaded at the right position inside the card and that uh, let's say this will reduce the side effects related to saving position uh, rotating the cameras etc etc so this is the first important uh, um, important uh, guideline uh, second point uh, let's say there are uh, plenty of lights uh, let's say so lights is probably the most important reason most important feature of the floor 3d card uh, so basically when you uh, define in floor 3d card um, a lamp and you assign it to a light uh, entity inside the uh, home assistant you will be able to see the light uh, uh, how to say uh, uh, on and off based on the state of the real light and this is the the nicest effect that you can have in your model in the in the card uh, one important thing here let's say uh, there is no point uh, uh, to use uh, what is called light source uh, object here in Sweet Tone 3D. These light source are only important to the 3D rendering uh, and 3D animations that you can do in Sweet Tone 3D, but they have no effect at all inside uh, um, the Floor 3D card. So instead, you just uh, use the normal lamps. So um, just to, for you to know, I totally ignore any light source that you put in the model. And the card will not take it into account. So the lights will be managed inside the lamp objects or the light objects that you uh, put in your model. Uh, so other important points, uh, let's say doors and windows have to stay closed at the first, uh, how to say, uh, model definition. Okay, so um, when you put doors and windows in Sweet Home 3D, you have the possibility to um, set the uh, door uh, open uh, degrees, etc. Uh, then uh, my uh, guideline here is to uh, leave the doors and windows op closed sorry so that uh, you will be able to model the door uh, opening uh, and the rotation of the door panel and the window panel um, inside the, the card uh, other important uh, point let's say for each of the room not to display the ceiling so um, you can see here, let's say I clicked on a room, the living room in this case, and there are a few per properties and parameters. So I put not to display the ceiling uh, for obvious reason. Uh, when you will uh, to say render the model in a floor 3D card, uh, if it is appearing with the ceiling, you will hardly see anything inside the model. So um, let's say I have preferred to, uh, how to say, not manage the, the ceiling. And by the way, let's say you will see later, it's better not to have uh, uh, several floors inside the same model. Um, another uh, important um, recommendation is to not to make your model too heavy. Uh, of course, uh, let's say the heavier, the prettier and the most realistic, but on the other side, uh, let's say the heavy model requires a lot of resources uh, inside the uh, renderer, inside the floor 3D card, uh, and this is not really, how to say, good for uh, your browser, your uh, navigation, uh, uh, your uh, PC performances in general, uh, etc. So uh, you better uh, do a model that is a good compromise between uh, uh, being realistic and nice, but being as well operable uh, inside the floor 3D card. Um, I I don't have an exact uh, how to say um, uh, recommendation about the the, the weight. Of the model itself, uh, of course, this also depends on the um, on your 
to say resources available in the PC, the graphical uh, processor unit, uh, the um, what else? Let's say the memory available, the um, let's say the amount of things that you open inside the PC in general, etc. Uh, and let's say another important point is that uh, this card is compatible with uh, mobile uh, navigators and mobile application uh, as it is fully based on uh, JavaScript so uh, again let's say these uh, are devices that do not have a lot of resources so if you do two heavy models uh, you will be able probably to display them inside your PC in your navigator but then you will have some real trouble to uh, achieve uh, the same thing inside um, uh, inside uh, a mobile device um, what else let's say uh, I would say uh, two things uh, additional uh, as I was saying before uh, mm, try to not to put levels inside the model um, in the end let's say I know that uh, uh, they can work uh, but let's say uh, there are some things when you build several levels that are not managed very well inside the card so it is very difficult to troubleshoot when you have a trouble, when you have a bug or whatever. So try to stick to only one level inside the model. Uh, and if you really need to have several levels, I, I suggest you to create uh, one model for each level and then uh, show it uh, uh, in separate cards inside the OM Assistant. Uh, no groups either. Uh, so again uh, the groups are also managed but somehow uh, I would say they can cause some uh, side effect inside the card so don't use uh, the furniture grouping um, you see there is a really this uh, feature group and ungroup which could be interesting you know in order to uh, I don't know, apply properties uh, inside the model to all the members of the groups uh, or to move all, all the group together especially when you have a complex uh, kitchen uh, setup or things like this but uh, again let's say this may cause some issues when you import and export the model now uh, let's say what it is important here is is that once you have uh, finished your model and you, uh, according to all your recommendation the recommendation that they have provided you you um, the operation that you need to do in order to um, uh, put and uh, export your model to the home assistant card is really to export use this function in the 3d view export to object format okay so the object format is really a um, format that allows you to um, uh, export the content of your model and re-import it inside the card of home assistant and the, the um, it's a format that uh, I have used in order to uh, allow this is the wavefront uh, model okay uh, so when you uh, save you choose your uh, destination folder uh, when you save uh, and you export to object fo uh, format uh, be careful you are not exporting only one file but a group of different file uh, and usually as a minimum you will have a, a dot obj file and a dot mtl file and probably as well a bunch of other files that are representing the textures so they are probably uh, jpeg images or uh, things like this um, so um, you in order to uh, re-import the uh, model to home assistant card you will have to take all the files that are generated and move it to uh, the home assistant card but we will see this in a specific tutorial dedicated to uh, starting up the card um, yes this uh, comes to uh, the a second um, important point uh, let's say when you are using the export uh, 
uh, to object format uh, unfortunately and uh, this is uh, something that I could not uh, how to say manage uh, unfortunately you um, have to rely on uh, object IDs that are generated automatically by the export function here uh, so uh, this is not good why because uh, in the uh, home assistant card the floor 3d card you will have to associate the entities to the names of the object that you will create now unfortunately the export to object format here does not uh, reuse the name that you can change here in the model you see here the name of the object um, what does it mean? it means that uh, um, if you do only how to say small changes uh, to the some properties of the objects uh, and some properties of the doors uh, of the walls etc uh, this uh, will not have impact on the name of the object that will be exported but if you start to uh, remove objects uh, um, especially the removal of the object and recreate a new one you will see that the object name will get will start to get uh, uh, changed and mix it up and then uh, when you re-import the same model inside the uh, home assistant card you will uh, not uh, let's say uh, have the same behavior because some object will not be found anymore and some other will have uh, their name changed uh, and the behavior will not be the same anymore so this is why uh, I have decided to uh, create a plugin that you see in tools uh, and I will dedicate also a specific tutorial to this uh, to this um, a plugin uh, that allows you to export object to home assistant so uh, really and here uh, the advantage of using this uh, export uh, plugin is that uh, the um, objects will preserve their names and so they will uh, across different version of your model uh, and uh, thanks to this it will be possible to um, how to say uh, comfortably uh, export the model to the object format uh, and re-import it without breaking the existing configuration that you have done inside the, the model so this is uh, let's say it for uh, today um, uh, I will explain the plugin in the in a next um, tutorial uh, knowing that uh, and this is why I'm not really how to say keen in uh, expanding too much uh, this plugin is very very experimental uh, and it requires a little bit of uh, tricks in order for it to work correctly uh, also it uh, depends a lot on the version that you have in of, um, of uh, Sweet Home 3D the type of deployment that you have so um, I prefer uh, not to uh, how to say support this plugin officially uh, because let's say this will require a lot of uh, work from myself let's say so I I support people that are opening issues trying to troubleshoot them but let's say I'm not solving every each and every issues that are appearing because it would be uh, incredibly uh, um, how to say difficult and hard for me to keep up so uh, thank you everybody uh, don't forget to um, subscribe to the channel um, and uh, let's say like this video thank you